Studio to Studio with your local lay Dominicans. We'll be discussing some of the gems we've discovered in our studio, where we share the fruits of our contemplation and the joy of the gospel message. Representing our St. Albert the Great lay Dominican community and co-hosts of today's show are myself, Cheryl Drozda, Jeff Drozda, Becky C. Today we're going to be discussing prayer basics, um, prayer 101, if you will. We um, have talked about posture, we've talked about the rosary, but let's go back to the very, I guess, basics of prayer and share some of the things uh, we really, really have helped us in our basic uh, personal prayer life. So we also have been discussing prayer in our studium while reading St. Dominic's My Way of Life. And, and, and really, you know, we can ask ourselves, what is prayer? Prayer is contemplation. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer could be just being silent. And um, I think this is what we would like to cover today, that I know a lot of folks struggle in, in prayer. Um, some people feel that they you know, can't concentrate, can't be silent, and that's a challenge. It definitely is a challenge for me. But, you know, how can we better pray? How can we not only communicate and, and talk to God, but how can we listen and respond to Him as well? So, you know, Becky, when in, in terms of, of, of prayer, what do you do for prayer, and, and what works best for you? Well, I can tell you mine has grown over the years. At one point, all I did was pray when I needed something. And then for a while, I didn't even pray at all. But since coming to as a lay Dominican, and I realized that I needed to change my prayer life. So now I pray whether I'm happy, whether I'm sad. I pray whether I need something or don't. And a lot of times I just sit with my eyes closed and wait for God to talk to me. One of the things I like and came upon is Philippians 4, 6. We pray about everything, but we worry about nothing. Amen to that. That's great. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to both of you, both having um, difficulty staying um, quiet and listening with so much noise in our world today and so many things um, like on our social media and so forth. It occupies our time and our hearts too much, and we really need to shut those down and take time even with more discipline now than ever before in the history of the world, I think. Um, and Becky, I think you said the other thing, making time for God. And that's what, as lay Dominicans, we have a s sort of a set schedule of time. We kind of anchor our day around morning and evening prayer and compline. So it it's definitely um, helpful when you have those anchors. And then throughout the day, you become more and more aware of being in the presence of God. And that's one, the best tips I've gotten recently is for everybody is if you want to pray better, pray often. It will happen. <laughs> and it's just a matter of you setting aside the time. Um, the other thing is a lot of times, I think, I, bl I believe I heard Father Mike say this, we sometimes go and listen to other people's prayer life and want to hear how they do it. And we think we've participated in that, but we need to actually have that relationship with God ourselves. We need to take the time um, and not just listen to what other pe how other people pray, but pray ourselves, Take make that effort. Take the time during the day, walk outside. If it's a beautiful day, walk outside and just be with God, have a conversation just like he's your best friend. And I know some families and, uh, and, and individuals and, um, would have in their home what they would call a, a prayer closet and where you could actually go in, and it doesn't even have to be a closet, it doesn't have to be a room, could just be a homemade shrine that, that's been co consecrated to uh, Our Lady. And that is something that is something very simple and that you can bring in the entire family. Either you as an individual by yourself, or you bring in your, your spouse, your family, and you make good use of the space that you have. And whether you, know, you, you have a crucifix, you have um, a statue, it's something that can put you in the presence of God. Not that you need any of that to, to be in the presence of God, but for people like me, it makes it a little bit more easy 
to focus and be in that presence because when you have visual um, items in front of you, then, then that's something that you can reflect on and meditate and contemplate. And, you know, for me, that, that's pretty important. I don't know about for other folks. So. Well, we're sentient beings. and We've discussed posture and the importance of it. So definitely our other senses, um, especially our visual senses, can help us with meditating and prayer. I know I have one of those prayer. I am uh, single, so I don't have a family to bring around. But what I do is I uh, sit in my prayer chair where I have a crucifix. I also have a picture of uh, my mother, um, who was a Dominican. And um, then I just sit and I just sit and close my eyes and let God talk to me. So we've covered a couple of basics, right? Time, making, setting aside the time, and, and also location, needing a place to be so that we're not distracted by stuff that we think we need to do once we sit <laughs> and look around the house and decide, oh, I need to clean that or whatever. You need sort of a place to get away, um, especially if you're not disciplined about um, getting distracted. So... The other thing is to just to just do it, right? Um, and I want to give a little anecdotal story that happened to me. I was at a mass where um, the homily was given to elementary age children. Our son was in, in there, a fifth grader. And the priest actually guided the children in a meditation. He asked them to close their eyes, uh, picture Jesus as best they could, and he really took time to help them to get an image of our Lord. And then he said, ask him if he loves you. And it really made a big impact on me. It was, I thought, oh, wow. And, and then later I talked to our son and um, I said, what would you think about that? And he goes, wasn't that just me saying that? He was just being honest, right? But when you don't when you don't regularly pray, you wonder. So at the beginning, I think that's a lot of people getting started, like, what am I going to hear? What am I going to... Well, at first, it seems like you. And as you pray more and more, you realize that there's another that's in your heart, that's in your living in your soul. And, and that is when I think, like St. Paul said, you know, I decrease and he increases. The more you pray, the more you realize that couldn't come from me, that was something from God. And um, so in all honesty, it can feel like that at the very beginning, just like my little um, little boy s- said so honestly, you know, wasn't that just me? Well, it at first it does feel like that. You're listening to uh, Christ Our King Catholic Radio for Acadiana on 90.5 and 99.5 FM and 12.30 a.m., uh, we are your lay Dominican group, and we operate out of uh, Our Lady of Wisdom Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. And we're talking about prayer today. Uh, one thing that, that might be good to cover, since we're lay Dominicans, um, you know, what do Dominicans do for for prayer? And it's really nothing, anything different than what everyone else does. But um, you know, we we do want to just cover a, a couple of items because. Of course, you know, what is the most perfect prayer that we can do? Obviously, that's, that's the Mass. Uh, attending daily Mass, if you can. I mean, uh, listening to it on the radio. Uh, on this radio station, of course, every, every day at, at uh, 12.05 p.m. Um, th- I think that's, that is, is something that people, once you get into the habit, I think it's, it's so, so rewarding to be in that perfect prayer every day, if you can, for, for daily Mass. And, and Cheryl and Becky, you know, you, we were talking about the time of day. And, you know, for those who are familiar with the Liturgy of the Hours, that, you know, every part of the day can be given to prayer. And so if, if you do the litur- Liturgy of the Hours, it's just a wonderful reading of the Psalms, the canticles, the, the, the readings, the intentions. And we know that the church around the world at every single moment is praying and offering thanks to God. And that is one of the, uh, of the great things about doing Liturgy of the Hours. As Dominicans, uh, you know, we are required to do the morning prayer and evening prayer, and um, also Compline, which is, which is night prayer. 
And for those of you who are not familiar with night prayer, it is a wonderful way to conclude the day. Um, there is also uh, a Dominican um, app that you can get for your, your, your computer, your phone, and it's just called uh, Dominican Complum. And what it is, you can, you can hear the Dominicans chant the night prayer and offer the prayers, and it is um, a wonderful way to conclude your day as an examination of conscience and, and really recognize what have I done today that's been good, uh, where have I failed? And you know that's what we should be doing every day, and it doesn't have to be in, in, a, in a specific format, but you can listen along to the beautiful prayers and chants of, of the Dominican friars out of St. Louis, and um, that's just something that is another option for focusing on every time of day we can offer our praise and glory to God. Another form of Dominican prayer, because we know study is a um, big part of our charism. So while we're studying, um, to make that study, uh, to sanctify the study, is using um, Lexio Divina, the method where you, you know, just stop and you listen. You try to listen to God and think about what you just read in the light of in the spiritual light, and of course most of what we read is spiritual reading anyway, but just taking time to reflect and not just reading through the words is another prayer. I think having having that, 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 that mental prayer, the Lectio Divina, and, and maybe people may not be familiar with that, but you know, it, it's referred to as you know, kind of chewing or gnawing on a, a phrase, a passage, uh, in Scripture, and just sitting with that, reflecting on it, gnawing at it, and, and and really focusing on how that particular Scripture reading relates to you, and God will speak to you, God will speak through you, and whether it's an Old Testament, New Testament, it is a, is a wonderful opportunity to just take that time to to be with the Lord in that type of prayer. I think... Earlier, Becky, you mentioned the Philippians 4, 6, and um, when you said you were going to be referring to that, it was just interesting that that was one of the Bible verses that I have chewed on for a long, long time. And um, eventually, when you something stands out like that, you want to memorize it. I think I kind of surprised Becky by <laughs> quoting verse, verses uh, 4 through, I think, 8 or 9 of, of Philippians for because I kept chewing and gnawing on it and I leaning on leaning into it and finally I said I'm just going to memorize this so I don't have to open open the book to um, to know it to put it in my heart and um, so I really would recommend memorizing some of the things that stand out during Lexio Divina um, chew on them for months even that's what I did with Philippians four I mean it was there for months before I memorized it so. And, you know, we can't talk about Dominican prayer without mentioning the rosary, of course. Um, tradition holds that, that Our Lady gave uh, St. Dominic the, the, the rosary, and, and he became, and the Dominicans became the, the true promoters of the rosary across, across the world. And yeah, even the Dominicans have a special way that, uh, that, that we say the rosary, certain prayers, that we um, that that we include, of course, in, in Thanksgiving for uh, Father Dominic for uh, the promotion of the Rosary, but you know we we look at you know whether you even have time to do one decade, five decades, if you want to do fifteen, twenty, you know just spending a little bit of time because um, you know Our Lady gave the Rosary to to Saint Dominic for a specific reason. And it was at that time to fully understand, you know, what, what was really, um, what is salvation history? And whether it was the rosary or whether it was, it was the, um, um, the, the stained glass windows in the church, um, you were able to, to meditate and, and contemplate on the life of Christ. And, and it's these visuals, you know, once again, for me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very visual, so that helps me out tremendously having those visuals as well as meditating on what Our Lady and what uh, Christ did 
um, while they were on this earth in terms of bringing souls um, to uh, to God. So that's something that, that I think we can never forget. I know some people feel that the rosary is a little bit, uh, you know, too rote, but it won't be if you take that time to dwell on each mystery. So if you're looking at you know, the, the, the glorious mysteries, and you're thinking, okay, let's, let's say it must be Wednesday, so you know, you're thinking about the descent of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we have a daughter that is going to receive her uh, sacrament of confirmation this spring. So, so when I think about that, you know, I offer, I think about the descent of the Holy Spirit in the upper room where Our Lady was, locked in there with the uh, um, disciples, and um, it, 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 was, it was something that turned the church um, around. I mean, it, it, it gave birth to the church, and I also contemplate on those receiving the uh, sacrament of, of a confirmation, not only for our daughter, but also for the entire class and everyone around the world receiving the, the, the sacrament but also for those people who need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Of course, we all need that, and some more than others. So, so you, you contemplate on that as well. So you can really take a lot of time on, on, on that contemplation, and that's just one mystery. That's a good point. I think when some people might be thinking, um, why pray right now? And I think the answer, there's a few answers. I'd say number one is because we were made to know, love, and serve God. And in order to love God, we need to know him. And in order to know him, we need to pray. Uh, He will let us know him more as we pray more. The other thing is he allows us to participate in his graces when we pray for people. You mentioned praying for our daughter. And recently I saw it was a beautiful interview about a man who was running in a neighborhood and he saw that somebody was going in an ambulance. There was nothing he could do to help, but he thought, well, I'm going to say a Hail Mary. It turns out that the woman, uh, he went running through that neighborhood about two weeks later. The woman came out, and, he, and she thanked him. And he's like, I didn't do anything. And she goes, yeah, the day I went out in an ambulance, um, I was in the hospital. I was, they were resuscitating me, and, and God showed me you and said that you prayed a rosary for me, and that's why I'm here. And it w- the guy was nearly in tears. It was the most sincere and beautiful thing. And it's not because God couldn't do that without him, but he's showing us that he wants us to participate in his grace. And, you know, every family has their, their, their little ways of, of prayer, especially with, with children. But a- a- if we're in the car... Or, or walking outside and an ambulance goes by, we immediately do the sign of the cross and say the Hail Mary, and another sign of the cross for not only the, 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 the um, individuals, for, for their soul who may be in harm's way, but also for those who, who care for them. And it's just those, those little ways of prayer throughout the day, and it, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It could be something as simple as, you know, Jesus, Mary, save souls say that you can do that thousands of times a day Um, and it has such uh, efficacious uh, workings that we may not see that uh, until hopefully we you know see the vision uh, of god face to face but in the example that you gave cheryl i mean he had no idea that 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 was going to you know have um, have the results that it did, and, and, and he was moved, and it's very clear that the Spirit was working within him. And it seemed really simple. I don't know that he felt like it was efficacious. I think that's got why God gave him that consolation. And also, he became a witness to this so that we know, even though we may not have that same like really grand experience like he did or consolation, but we need to know that that is also happening when we pray when you pray, it is efficacious. And, you know, as Dominicans, we hope to take our prayer into, you know, a deeper and deeper and deeper level as, as we continue on this, on this journey here on earth. And one of the uh, probably most, most famous Dominicans in terms of um, his, his writings and his thoughts on prayer 
uh, Father Reginald Gary Lagrange. He was, is, was just amazing in the works that he turned out. Um, I think it was around 1940s, 1950s. Um, he came out with Three Ages of the Interior Life, um, many commentaries on the, on the Summa, but also one of the documents that, uh, one of the, the, the publications that, that we took to Studium uh, was The Mother of Our a Savior. And it really went very, very deep into the dogma of the Church on, on Mary. And I think we all kind of understand Mary's role, but I walked away with um, a, a very new and invigorated understanding of Mary's role, and uh, historically, from the very, very beginnings of the church, um, even even up until until today. So, you know, once again, as a Dominican, we continue to learn, study, and pray. I mentioned the book we're doing at the Studium, St. Dominic's Way of Life, A Path to Knowing and Loving God. Um, and in that book, uh, he does get into this deeper prayer, the form of contemplation. However, um, he, sa- he simply states, contemplation is nothing but the raising of the soul to God. And he wants to reiterate that um, con- contemplative prayer is not reserved for the spiritual elite. It is for everyone. And again, I think what we really wanted to do is share tips of simple things because we're not um, the elite prayers. <laughs> we are still you know, growing in prayer, but we can definitely, we definitely know what has helped us over time. And I uh, just want to feel really called to share those things, the simple things um, that we've shared so that prayer can be easier and more doable to everyone. And, and that's in our everyday life. Uh, we all have our, our, our vocations in life. We all you know, wh- whether we work at home, work in an office, work um, I- outside somewhere, you know, we all have the opportunity to witness to, to others. Now, you know, Becky, every day you work with people, you have the opportunity to, to touch them and, 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 and to talk with them. Um, what have you found in terms of how you share your faith life and prayer with the folks that you work with? Well, I actually work with um, the elderly in an assisted living and they love to hear exactly what I'm learning uh, there's actually a couple of them that want to come and join us and just uh, stop and listen and just to be a part and they spend a lot of their days in prayer and for me to share the way I do it or the way some of the things I'm learning uh, just lightens up their day that's great. I, I feel that um, the example of the people that I've met in a nursing home who've prayed has, has really made an impact on me, too. Well, and, and one of um, uh, one individual on our daughter who's receiving uh, her, her sacrament, um, Cheryl, you might want to tell the, the, the story of, of Miss Mary and the impact that she's had on our daughter. Yeah, she... Um, was was working with Miss Mary this summer while uh, just being with her basically at home. Miss Mary is very um, lively, ninety-one year old, very um, sharp, and but but had to stay mostly in a wheelchair. So Angelica would be there for a few hours a day to make lunch and so forth until um, Miss Mary's daughter came home. And in in that time the witness of her life, um, her prayer life and her wisdom as a, as a faithful Catholic woman, I would say changed our daughter's life. Um, I mean, it confirmed her in faith. Um, it's opened her up to many, to vocation considerations. Um, and it gave her hope actually. She saw someone that she could be like, that she could say at the end of life, I want to be like that that prayerful, beautiful woman, and I think it, it it's amazing. And as all Christians should do, is, you know, take their faith and, and their prayer in, into the workplace, wherever it is that, that you work, and, you know, sometimes it can be very challenging. 
sometimes that, I mean, as, as Roman Catholics, you know, we, you know, have very strong beliefs on, on certain moral and, and ethical values, and sometimes that's a challenge for um, individuals who, who are working in, in various uh, uh, positions and, and, and uh, other vocations throughout, uh, throughout the workplace. And always remember that there is a, always a way to, to witness. It could be a silent witness, but also it could be a, a verbal witness in, in, in talking to folks. Uh, whether, you know, you're at the state capitol or, you know, whether, um, you know, you're walking around the neighborhood, uh, whether you're working with elderly, there is always opportunities to, to minister to others because there are, there, there's a lot of brokenness that's out there. And just even a smile is, is a witness and uh, a, a form of prayer to others. So don't be discouraged, uh, be encouraged that um, the Holy Spirit will give you, give you that grace to minister and, and pray with others. Actually, I also have staff who are having some issues uh, with their families, and they come up to me and say, would you please include, and they name their family member on your prayer at night. And um, so, I mean, it's, it's one, made me feel like, wow, I'm making a difference in somebody's life. That was great, Becky. Um, this is a great way to wrap up our program. God bless. Lived through time, passed through fire, broke my heart, wounded desire, changed my life, fixed the past, I stared at death and it stared back, standing fast in the light of the word, a shotgun blast was the last thing I heard, I rattled in the wind like a window pane, my soul's alright but my body...